Moving on, I've got a package schedule. And what you'll see for every schedule type, there is a package option available. So what is a package? I'm going to go ahead and create one here. Again, your description and keywords are optional. And the next step, I'm going to select the schedule of when this report should run. And then I've got to first set my destination. So you'll notice the wizards are very similar, but there may be a, uh, a difference as far as the options or in the order that um, you may be creating or selecting and configuring your settings. So I'm going to go ahead and set my destination. I'm going to go ahead and select my email for this example. I'm going to hit next. And now I need to add in my report. So I'm going to go in and I'm going to select a report. What you'll notice, I've got my report name that auto-populated. I can then select my format. So here I'll select CSV. And what you'll notice with CSV, I do have some additional options here, I'm selecting the character and delimiter, as well as how I'm going to export um, the CSV. Should I use legacy or standard? These, again, are options directly in Crystal Reports as well. And then I've got my parameters. In my case, I do not have any parameters, so they are no longer there. And then I do have my naming. So if I want to customize my output file name, which I do like to add in, again, the, the date option. And then I have my report options if it requires credentials, my exception handling if I want to check if the report is blank. So that is specific to that one report. I can now go in and add in another report. Now why would I do this? I'm going to go ahead and select a report here and I've got my parameter, my naming, The great thing about a package schedule is you may have some managers who require, you know, two or three daily reports, and they don't want to get three emails every day with the report. Maybe they want one email with all of their daily reports attached. This is why you would use a package schedule. It saves the end user or recipient from getting multiple emails with reports. Now, report options and the um, exception handling is fine. So I've got here two crystal reports that are going to be packaged together. So one destination with both of the reports attached because I am using an email destination. Now, you'll notice here I do have the ability to merge some files. In my case, I am using um, a PDF format, so I can select to merge my, P my two reports together into one. I don't have to enable this if I don't want. This is all optional here, so I can hit OK. And now I need to, I can say combined daily report, and I can still use my current date insert as well. So the recipient will get one email with one attachment because both of these reports will run and then be merged together into one PDF. You can do this with text files as well as Excel files. And with the Excel files, you can even merge them into one single workbook or a worksheet. You'll notice you have an option here to run the package using multiple threads. Now this is for Crystal Reports 2008 or later. Uh, but let's say you have both of these reports. Instead of the first one running, then waiting for the second one to run, you can run both of them simultaneously by enabling this option here. Now why would you do that or why wouldn't you want to do that? Let's say this report needs to run and complete before this one runs because the data in, in there or maybe there's something with that report where it requires this one to be ran first, uh, you would then want to leave that um, disabled. 
This very last option is the snapshots. Again, if you want to keep a snapshot of the execution for so many days, you can enable that and set the setting there. I'm going to go ahead and hit Next. You'll notice you've got your overall exception handling, so not only at the report level, but at the package level. And you'll notice this is where the error handling comes back as well, whereas under these options here, it, the options for the error handling were not there, only if the checking if the report is blank. I'm going to go ahead and hit Next, and the very last option again is all of your custom tasks that are available. So I'm going to go ahead and hit Finish. So again, just to recap, with a package schedule, it is multiple single schedules that you package in together. This gives you the ability, um, better user experience or customer experience for the recipient um, to be able to receive one uh, email, if it, again you are using an email destination, and get um, the reports attached or even merged in together into one attachment. So moving on to uh, dynamic schedules, what, why would you use a dynamic schedule? What is it? Well, a dynamic schedule allows you to send multiple uh, instances of, uh, of the same report. Um, so you may have a report, for example, where you have to deliver what I would call regional reports. So if you have a company that is worldwide and you've got like 1,500 stores, each of those stores needs a copy of their own report. That is, you can do so by adding in that information. So each store manager is going to get a copy of that report. But if there's 1,500 stores, I don't want to create 1,500 schedules. You can use a dynamic schedule to automatically send out or create and generate that report. So I'm going to go in here and select a report. And name the schedule. You'll notice here it is a little different. You are now needing to select your destination here. Um, in this case, I am going to go ahead and use a disk destination. And then you will set your schedule. Now I need to select my parameters for the report. So I'm going to use the company name. Now you do have an option to populate the key parameter with static data or populate the key parameter with data from um, a database using a query. So in this case here, if I select database um, from a query that I'm selecting, I parse that, and I need to finish grabbing what I need, company name. So if I parse here, I have a 91 records of company names. These are each of the stores listed here. I'm going to hit OK, and now you'll notice the discrete value is the company name. Now I can populate the key parameter with static data as well, so I can manually go in and select the specific company that I am looking for. Under the advanced, you've got your record selection and, and group selection formula. And then if you had any sub-reports, you would have the ability to view and make some additional uh, report options within it. I'm going to hit Next. And now you've got your uh, ability to specify the destination, whether it's going to be a static destination or uh, is it going to be based on data in a database. So let's say each store, the manager, some managers want it in an email, some managers want it in a, um, a disk location, maybe their FTP site. If you have that information stored in your database, you could simply connect to that um, database and it grab the destination information. In my case, I am going to use a static destination. And I will need to go in and select the location of where I want it saved. And you'll notice here I can then select my formatting. 
So everyone goes to a network shared location and the report is going to be in PDF for everybody. Now, I would want to customize this and I would like to use the company name. Well, here I've got the insert key parameter, so it will use the key parameter which will run through each of the companies and that will be the name of the report. Moving on, I've got my report options, so you'll notice here pretty much the same layout that it's going into. Uh, you do have the ability to resume um, with cache data. So let's say you get through 1,000 um, uh, of these store parameters and you've got 500 more to go and for whatever reason this schedule fails, you can have it pick up where it left off at 1,001 versus having to rerun and start from the very beginning. And again, you've got your snapshots that you can enable. Your exception handling, again, very similar as far as the layout and options that you'll have for each schedule type. And then you have your list of custom tasks. What you'll notice here is an option to run the custom tasks for each report that is generated or simply once for the entire schedule. Because this one schedule is gonna generate 1,500 reports, one for each store, you may or may not want that uh, custom task to run for each report that's being generated. I'm going to go ahead and hit finish and you've now got a dynamic schedule listed here. Now as an example I do want to go ahead and bring up um, an earlier um, execution where you'll notice that for each company it has created that folder and within it is that combined uh, report for each of them that I've specified. So this is a way to easily um, create and send reports without having to manually create one for each store. Now what is a dynamic package? Well, to save time because we know what a package typically is based on the first example, it's going to be multiple dynamic packages into one. So you have your 1500 stores and not only do they need their sales report, but they also need um, employee timesheets for that week. Instead of creating um, two multiple uh, dynamic schedules and having two emails sent to each store manager, you could just package it in together so that that store manager gets both of them in one email destination or simply in one location. So I've got one here that I'm simply going to edit and go through. You'll notice the scheduling. Then you're adding in your reports because you can add in multiple uh, reports. You do have the merging capabilities that we've reviewed under a regular single package. And then within the destination, you've got your destination and additional options, your exception handling, and your custom tasks. Now what you'll notice here is the linking, and this is that the key parameter, which here I've got the populate data with the database or with static data, and you'll notice we've got the static destination listed here as well. I'd like to go ahead and move on to the event-based scheduling. So what is event-based? It is triggering a report based on a condition. Well, what kind of condition? A great example would be uh, new orders or new customers, possibly a new sale. Um, maybe if uh, something happens, you, you're monitoring support and a new support ticket comes in, maybe you want to notify someone or run a report. Let me go ahead and name it this schedule. And when I click on next, the next um, option I'm going to be doing is creating my condition. So under the add, these are all of the condition types 
that I can select from. So I'm monitoring for um, a new record or modified record in a database, monitoring for um, a file location, whether a file um, was added or has been modified. Uh, we also have unread mail is present, so monitoring a mailbox for any unread emails. I'm going to go ahead and select database record has been modified. And the reason I select that is because it, it can be a modified, but with the modified option, I can also select new records as well. And I can say new modified orders and true. So I'm going to connect to my database that I want to um, grab. I'm going to go ahead and grab my orders. So if I parse this currently, I have 830 records in my database for orders. And this is all the detailed information that we have. I'm going to hit OK. And I'm going to hit OK here. Now the primary key in this case is going to be the order ID. Now you do have an additional option to match the condition if the record has or has not been modified in a, speci um, a, a certain number of minutes that you've specified. I'm going to leave that unchecked, but I do want to detect inserted and deleted records. So I've completed my condition. Now I can go in and add in another condition as well. So if I wanted to do that, uh, which in this case I will not, um, you will need to specify um, any or all. So do all of the conditions have to be met or do any of the conditions have, have to be met? Because I only have one, this does not really apply. So now I need to determine what happens next. What happens once my condition has been met? Do I want to run a new report? Do I want to um, execute an existing schedule that I've already created? Or do I select none? Because maybe I just want to send an email. So if I hit new report and I hit next, what I'm going to be doing is basically selecting a new crystal report and creating a new schedule. If I go back and select existing schedule, that will allow me to select a schedule I've already created. I can then go through and just simply hit none. Now, once I hit none, or if I've used existing and I hit next and I've selected it, the next option is going to be the exception handling, no matter what option I've selected here. And then the next thing will be the custom tasks. After custom tasks, you get to see your execution flow, so the order that the uh, event-based schedule is going to go in. I'm going to go ahead for this purposes of this example and hit none. Now, why would I hit none? If I go down to my exception handling and then go to custom tasks, maybe I just want to send an email. I don't really want to send a report. I just want to send uh, support an email that an, a new ticket has come in. I want to send the sales uh, employees uh, an email that a new order has been placed or there's a new opportunity. Whatever this may be here, new support ticket, and I want to send this maybe to the support group, and I can just enter in the email. Now, what information would I want to put in this email? If we go to the insert screen under event-based data, what you'll notice is I've got all of the data um, from my condition that I've created. Now, in this case, I've got the order information. So maybe this should be um, a, a new order. And this is just the task name. But to make it flow and make more sense, I can now select the information from here and build out an email template. So here is a new order that has been placed. And you can use this information to build out the email. 
So the information based on that record when a new record is added or a modified record, so it could be new or modified order here, that would make sense. So you can use these inserts and it'll populate with that data. So this is a great way to send email notifications if you don't necessarily have a report that needs to run. I'm going to hit OK and hit Finish. So that is an event-based schedule. And if we go into event-based packages, we can kind of get the idea of what that would be. So I have one created already. And I've got the schedule. And you'll notice here that it is one report. I can go in and hit add and either do a new report or an existing report that I can add in. Now, you'll notice here, I'm going back to the schedule because normally with the event base, which we noticed, there is no scheduling because it pulls every 30 seconds based on my condition. Maybe you like the event based, but you still only want it to, to be on a scheduled time frame. Maybe you only want an email with all of your new orders that have happened today, once a day at the end of the day. You can put that schedule into an event based package and schedule that out. Um, you, there is no minimum as far as the number of schedules that you can add in, in, in a package. Outside of that, you'll notice your execution path. Um, you do have your history because this is an already existing schedule, but you will have that available to you as well. Christian Stevens Software. Bigger data, better business.